a common response that I've got to the book is people saying, OK, yes, fine. There are clearly some downsides to the status quo. You know, clearly when sexual liberation has, 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 had, has been a bit of a mixed blessing. But the alternative that you seem to be, you know, hearkening us all back to is patriarchal religion, which is much worse. And those are our options, is, is, is kind of the critique that I get. Um, as someone who's obviously very critical of patriarchal religion, I mean, it, it seems as though that what we want is a happy is a happy medium, you know, get all the good bits from both options and none of the bad bits. Knowing humans as we do, that's probably not possible. There probably are going to be some trade-offs. Do you, do you think it's Do you think something in the middle is achievable or do you think we're always going to end up being excuse me, or do you think we're always going to end up being tugged sort of to one extreme? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think a, a middle could be achievable for a short period of time in any case. Um, but there is now, I, I agree that there's um, some things that uh, you you can't just uh, cut away the patriarchal aspect of it um, and keep uh, the kinds of social norms that I think would be healthy for young men and young women. Um, but I'm curious, what would uh, the, the people that I mean, you mentioned patriarchal religion? What does that mean to you? I'm um, growing up in. I mean, I think Europe in general is just an entirely different context when it comes to what they mean when they say conservative religion, and what we here in the states mean when when we say it. Um, so, what do you picture when you say a patriarchal religion? Well, for me, it's completely hypothetical because I've just been brought up in like the dechristianized west and and i've never encountered anything like you know like an actual um people shadow box in the uk against sort of supposed like christian conservatism christian conservatism is completely dead in the water in this country it just doesn't exist um like the church of england is currently debating whether or not god is non-binary like this is like this is this is, this is done right <laughs> um i mean in this country properly conservative religious minorities are, are are Muslim, right? That being the the, the largest ethnic minority in this country. Um and and yet interestingly I think when cr critics of my book, what they assume that I'm, you know, whether intentionally or not, um presenting as a as a more palatable alternative is something like, I guess, Victorian Christianity. That seems mm. odd to me to to th that's the only option that we can um, possibly utilize. Having said that, though, it won't be it, it. You can't have it both ways, actually. So there will be some um, gains, quote unquote, that I think you do have to um, concede a little bit. And by that, I mean it, not rights necessarily, like uh, you should be able to get an abortion, you should be able to get access to birth control. But when we come, when we are talking about social norms, um, there's this idea that you shouldn't feel stigmatized about any life choice. Like you shouldn't feel as if anything that you're doing is worse than anything else that you could be doing. And that in or, that that's that's such a norm that stigmatizes one thing. Um, and privileges another is inherently, you know, it's unequal, it's discriminatory, it's prejudiced, whatever. And um, it's the kind of social pressure that we should not tolerate um, on any level. And I think that that might be something that we have to give up, that uh, that we have to begin using um, some of these old school, like social pressure um, vehicles to get people to do the healthy thing, you know, for themselves and for for society in general. Um, that's just something that most people are not willing to tolerate, though. They they kind of they want to have it both ways. Um, on my podcast with Megan Daum, we talk a lot about not having children, um, or even women who uh, wait too long to have children and then then they can't, you know, um, and. Often it adds up, uh, you know, we have this like sort of loosey-goosey way and I, 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 I'm criticizing myself um, and, 
you know, our conversation a little bit as I say this, because we will say, you know, you should be, you should be able to, you know, if you really don't want kids or if you really want a career, you should be, you should be able to do that. But also we should talk about how it, it's okay to be a mother when you're young. You, should, you know, everything should be mm. great and everyone should be, you know, lauded for their choices. And I just think that that's, that's probably very naive. <laughs> And you'll just have to make, you have to privilege um, one choice over another fundamentally. Um, and that's not feminist. It's really rare to hear someone actually say that. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I often feel pressure to do that as, as well, to say, look, all options are great. You know, look, I mean, but it yeah. is just the nature of it. Like if you're, and it's painful. It is, it is painful. If you say, you know, motherhood is, is the ideal. If you just say it, then you are going to make, a whole bunch of women feel shit yes yes but that's with feminism to, to such a great degree feminism is about making sure that society doesn't make people feel uh badly about anything you know um it, it, it has less to do with outcomes and how happy are they in the end um how empowered and uh self-actualized or whatever and more of in the moment we have to make sure that we are uh encouraging to every woman and uh, giving them the right kind of uh, you know affirmations <laughs> um, to, to power through and I, I um, it, it, it's it's it has me doubting feminism a little bit actually because uh, ultimately I don't think that it, that's good for you I think sometimes a little bit of bad feelings for good reasons <laughs> it's, it's it's telling you something useful it's okay to feel that way um and that it's uh it's interesting that there's a this broader movement that claims to be to care so much about one group of one, one population and it doesn't really seem to focus too much on how is how is all this choice how is all the this affirmation um uh, actually affecting them in their lives and where is it leading them in the end like are they happier um, are they more fulfilled are they feeling less anxious about their their place in in the world um, yeah there's a book called um, good reasons for bad feelings has any of you read it I've had it on oh. my wish I've had it on my wish list for ages and it's about it's about okay. like uh, explaining negative emotions in evolutionary terms like w w why do you mm. I've not read it, so I'm speculating. But, you know, an example would be that feeling of... Uh, you ever had the expression, the hedonic treadmill? When you... Um, I've heard yeah, of when it. When you but... um, achieve something nice and you feel great about it, but you feel great about it for, for like five minutes and then you think, okay, yeah. on to the next thing. And you need this constant sort of like um, yeah. new positive stimulus. You can never sort of um, rest on your laurels. It, it, it has an obvious purpose. You know, like if, if that's... That kind of striving mindset is obviously useful to you as a um, mortal, fallible creature who needs to be constantly sort of um, working hard to achieve good things. It's just not very pleasant to experience. <laughs> it would be, it would be nice to be no, blissed no, out all no. the time, but that's just not the nature of life. We th we we think of um, negative feelings as something to as um, almost a medical problem yeah. <laughs> that you need to you know you need to find an external solution to um, not listen to it you know and think about what it might be telling you about your 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 place in the world or the choices that you that you are making at the moment um, it's odd I find it you know I it, I don't want to derail this discussion and, and go on to psychiatry but I have like many gripes about <laughs> about the amount of you know antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications that um, we're ingesting as a population at least Americans are um, Americans are taking a lot of uh, medications for for their anxiety and depression symptoms um, it's uh, incredible actually um, and it makes me think about how all of, you know that we talk about birth control and how it might be changing the, your day-to-day -day interactions with the world and how it might be changing how you feel and how you behave as a sexual being. Um, certainly these drugs are doing something. Um, and, you know, with us, we're just chasing just this, I, I want to make this bad feeling go away. This drug will make it happen. Um, 
Yeah, Brits love antidepressants too. I can't remember the numbers, but it's, it's amazing. Like a quarter of us or something like that, a quarter of adults prescribed antidepressants at any one time. Um, I've been thinking about this recently in relation to um, Betty Friedan's writing on, um, mm. I can't remember exactly the phrase she uses in the book, um, in The Feminine Mystique, but I think it's the malady that has no name or the problem that has no name. It's when she's um, she's describing this sort of anxiety and malaise and whatever experienced by housewives who are stuck mm-hmm. in this um, uh, late 1950s sort of setup and feeling intellectually frustrated and lonely and all of this. And, you know, she's right that clearly women do experience, often experience those emotions in those kind of contexts. And, I, I, you know, it, it, it always bears repeating that, that that setup of the nuclear, the lonely nuclear family separated from the extended family in the community is historically strange and clearly is very bad it for is. people psychologically. And absolutely, I don't think, I think that women should as much as possible be with their children, but they shouldn't be alone while they're with their children. Like the, the particularly mothers of little babies, having other adults around is really, really is really, really protective when it comes to things like postnatal depression. So, she, you know, she is right. But then I also look at the mental health of women post this enormous influx of middle-class women into the workforce, and I see that the malady that has no name has not gone away. I mean, it's just been called depression anxiety, and we've been prescribed a whole load of SSRIs for it, which suggests to me that what's going on was is not precisely that women are unhappy when they're housewives and they're happy when they're allowed to work, because actually... If anything, average sort of life satisfaction among American women has declined slightly during that period. Um, so whatever's going on, it's not quite that simple. It's not. It's not. And some somebody needs to be talking about it. It should be something that calls itself feminism, you know, and, and but talking about it in real terms and not just. Um, you know, well, we're still we still have a ways to go in terms of sexism in the workplace, really. We're back to talking about the same problems over and over again. And it it frustrates me so much, um, you know, even when, when it comes to the, the conversation around children, it's uh, well, we need, uh, you know, more supportive policies, which we do. I agree. I think that we do need more supportive policies for parents. But I think that there's something else going on, too. Um, something larger than all than than state interventions, and we actually know that because we there there are countries who are very um, liberal and generous in the in the benefits that they provide parents, and they are st- still going through similar problems. I mean, maybe not as d- to the same degree as us, but they're still going through something um, that is uh, making children seem as if it's an impossible burden um, for young people to take on maybe because it actually is or maybe just appears that way because we have new options in front of us that are far more tantalizing um, and interesting. Uh, so I, I feel like the conversation should, should, you know, actually take into account what people are facing in the modern world instead of having the same discussion that Betty Friedan and, you know, second wave feminists were having. <laughs> 